An explosive film has shown that millions of trees are destroyed in the name of renewable energy. It also claims that renewables are as bad as fossil fuels. And this is from environmentalists. It takes an incredible amount of energy to mine and process all of the materials that go into building something like this. You use more fossil fuels to do this than you're getting benefit from it. You would have been better off just yeah. burning the fossil fuels in the first place. We'll check the claims and show a much larger cover-up, the hidden reason that the world has failed to reduce carbon emissions and is heading for catastrophe. Scientists warn that the world is on course to warm by over three degrees, which would put many major cities underwater. Three million years ago, when temperatures were last in this range, sea levels were 30 meters higher. Hurricanes will be much stronger, destroying major cities in the US and Asia. Large areas of the world will turn to desert, risking wars over resources. Scientists expect this three-degree temperature increase will happen even if countries meet their commitments under the Paris Climate Agreement. Only one country has taken steps compatible with the Paris targets. Most of the world has taken insufficient steps, while the US and Russia are rated critically insufficient. Experts point to a hidden problem that is causing this failure and a powerful trick that has forced governments to keep it quiet. But first, let's check those claims about renewable energy. The film shows that millions of trees are being burnt as biofuel with the US exporting wood around the world. The UK, for example, imports millions of tons of wood pellets. Governments argue that trees can be replaced, but scientists point to a problem. When trees are burnt, they release a lot of CO2. The idea is to absorb it with new trees, but studies show that this would take around 40 to 100 years. Fast-growing pine plantations actually worsen the problem because they hold less carbon than the natural forests they replace. 200 scientists wrote to the EU warning that wood creates more emissions than coal because it's less efficient to process. Professor Lucht said there is nothing green, renewable or environmentally friendly about it. And of course forests could be expanded without first burning them down and accelerating the mass extinction of wildlife. A study found that restoring forests could reduce CO2 as much as removing all the world's cars. The film exaggerates the scale of biomass, but it is a serious problem and the tip of the iceberg. First, let's check the film's claim that all renewables are as damaging as fossil fuels. One of the most dangerous things right now is the illusion that Alternative technologies like wind and solar are somehow different from fossil fuels. The film shows how solar cells are often made by melting quartz with coal. You start with a very high quality quartz and a very high quality coal. And then you put those two together into uh, an arc furnace and you melt them. The quartz is then melted with coal in a large furnace at temperatures of up to 1,800 degrees. So you need more coal to do that. So this I get another coal out. That's when we melt these together, we get silicon metal and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide just goes off and you got rid of the carbon, you're left with silicon metal. This is not clean coal. Not clean yeah. coal. <laughs> Studies show that renewable energy sources emit up to 50 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour over their lifetime, compared to around 1,000 grams for coal and 475 for natural gas. Most of the life cycle emissions from fossil fuels are from combustion. Manufacturing solar panels requires a lot of energy, but this is offset within around two years of operation. By this point, we might have surprised those who see climate change through a political lens left or right. Please do check the sources. The film also suggests that solar can't replace coal. But the good news is that wind and solar are rapidly replacing coal in several countries. 
So why did the film go so far off course? Its wild statements drew attention to the fact that we are failing to tackle climate change. When governments stick a green label on biofuel, they are doing the opposite. And it's part of a much bigger cover-up of the problem and the solution. The film suggests a dramatic cut in consumption, but with billions of people growing wealthier, it's a tall order. Market forces are too strong. But studies show that these forces can be the most powerful solution to climate change. Economists describe the market as failing because it hides the cost of carbon. It's like not paying for rubbish collection, and it makes the atmosphere an open sewer. An IMF study found that if prices had been corrected in 2015, the world would be very different. Global CO2 emissions would have been 28% lower. That's like removing all the world's cars, trucks, ships and planes. The economy would have grown faster. And the number of deaths caused by fossil fuel air pollution, around 3.6 million per year, would have been cut in half. Based on this, the carbon cover-up may have cost over 10 million lives and has killed more than coronavirus this year. A study found that 40,000 children die each year before reaching their fifth birthday because of exposure to fossil fuel air pollution. In total, air pollution accounts for 25% of all deaths from heart disease and 24% of deaths from stroke. And in parts of the US, it nearly doubles the risk of dementia. So what's stopping governments from taking action? Countries that have introduced carbon taxes haven't suffered economically. And a poll of a thousand top economists found a consensus that if temperatures rise by three degrees, it will plunge the world's economy into a deep depression or worse. 75% also said that a carbon tax was the most efficient way to tackle climate change. Companies go to great lengths to reduce taxes and would cut carbon in the process. Governments understand all this, but a powerful illusion prevents them from acting. Only 20% of Americans know that scientists agree that we are causing climate change. And even this group underestimates the consensus, which stands at 97%. Studies show that discovering this fact is a gateway to accepting the science of climate change. And polluters made this connection decades ago, leading to a powerful trick that still controls our governments today. Exxon scientists discovered climate change in the 1980s, and they built their oil platforms higher to deal with rising sea levels but they also began sowing public confusion. In the late 80s, 80% 80 of Americans knew that climate change was a problem caused by fossil fuels. It wasn't a partisan issue. We all know that human activities are changing the atmosphere in unexpected and in unprecedented ways. Exxon paid for articles referring to the climate change debate. In 97, Exxon CEO suggested that the Earth was cooling, 20 years after his own scientists discovered the opposite. His retirement package was $400 million. The illusion of a climate debate persists, preventing serious action. A recent IMF study found that without a carbon tax, we are heading for temperatures that would turn southern Europe to desert. Tourists and visitors barely notice the environmental catastrophe in Spain. No one seems to realize what's taking place just a few kilometers inland. This region has lost more and more of its population, its people and its trees. We moved away because there was less and less rain. 40 or 50 years ago, it rained a lot more. Now it hardly rains at all. Hardly anyone lives here anymore. The IMF found that carbon taxes could prevent this. Combined with investments in renewables, the IMF projects that economic growth would increase and emissions would decrease to net zero by 2050. It could keep temperatures under 2 degrees, beyond which we risk dangerous tipping points. 
For example, Arctic permafrost contains a trillion tons of carbon dioxide, 40 times as much as our global emissions in 2018. As the ground warms, this could be released at an accelerating pace, one of many potential carbon bombs. An IMF study found that keeping temperatures under 2 degrees would require a carbon tax of around $75 per tonne. And this roughly matches the true cost of carbon based on damage from rising sea levels, more severe storms and wildfires, higher healthcare costs and other impacts. Economists, environmentalists and even some oil companies agree that carbon taxes are essential for us to change course. A group of more than 3,000 uh, economists have pleaded for the introduction of carbon pricing. People from all kinds of parties in the US. And it will raise huge sums. So where should the money go? Other taxes can be reduced at the same time to avoid it becoming a political issue. All the funds can be invested in clean energy or health care or returned to citizens. Alaska pays all its citizens an annual dividend raised from oil companies. Sweden's carbon tax has reduced emissions by 25%, while its economy has grown 75%. In Switzerland, residents receive a dividend as a rebate on compulsory health insurance. Canada returns most of its carbon tax revenue to citizens. And Europe's carbon tax has seen dramatic cuts in emissions. But until emissions are properly priced, the market remains broken. In the US, most states have little or no carbon taxes. But if we stop subsidizing fossil fuels, how much more will we pay for renewable energy? This is a map of energy prices across Europe. The countries that draw more energy from renewables have lower energy prices. In Germany, electricity costs around 50% less than in Poland, which relies heavily on coal. For the first half of this year, for the first time, Europe has generated more electricity from renewables than from fossil fuels. In the US, with minimal carbon taxes, fossil fuels generated more than 62% of electricity last year and renewables less than 18%. There is hope in the US, where a bipartisan group is pushing for a carbon tax which could raise $2 trillion over 10 years. It may be the only major climate action the left and right can agree on, with the money going to citizens rather than government. Planet of the Humans was correct in its main point, that human consumption is destroying the planet. And carbon taxes rein in the most damaging consumption while encouraging new, less harmful products. The greatest climate change con isn't the millions of trees being burnt in the name of renewable energy. It's that governments chose this and worse by hiding the cost of carbon and secretly subsidizing the biggest polluters. Australia sums up the problem. In 2012, it taxed carbon and emissions fell, but climate doubt and the lure of cheap electricity put an end to the taxes just a year later. Electricity prices rose. And Australia's devastating fires showed the true cost of unrestrained carbon pollution, killing at least 34 people and a billion animals. Doing a little koala rescue. She's a mother with a baby. And I'm cuddling. Just trying to collect as many live ones as we can. Half of the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest living structure, has already died. Globally, 19 of the 20 warmest years have all occurred since 2001. Scientists say climate change plays an unequivocal role in California's fires. Storms, Droughts and floods are intensifying. We have already lost up to half of all individual animals. And we are all funding this destruction. The IMF found that we subsidize fossil fuel companies by $5 trillion per year. That's more than the US spends on healthcare. 
and big oil is working to keep it that way. Last year, an Exxon-funded group asked NASA to correct a statement on its website that multiple studies published in peer-reviewed scientific journals show that 97% or more of climate scientists agree on human-caused climate change. The complaint cited old, disproved blog posts. But there is hope. Governments are considering using carbon taxes to drive green economic growth and pull us out of recession. Please leave a comment encouraging your government to act decisively. And if you're wondering what to watch next, the 700 miles per hour Hyperloop is to replace many flights, cancelling their emissions. When will it arrive? And how will the world change when we can commute 200 miles in 20 minutes. You can watch now. The link's in the description.